Today, we're joined with Rob Lincoln from Paydoc. Paydoc is an innovative enterprise grade payments orchestration platform. Paydoc assists merchants and payment service providers resolve systemic inefficiencies and risks associated with the industry's growth, such as ever increasing complexity, lost profit and material risk. Clients include tier one for profits, major retailers, global travel platforms, insure tech leaders and fast food chains. Paydog's ambition is to return billions in lost profit to its target markets while introducing best-in-class payments infrastructure to some of the most loved brands in the world. Hi, thank you so much for joining us for this interview. I uh, just wanted to start by asking what is Paydoc and what are the main ideas behind it? Hi, thank you. Thank you, Camilla. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, in terms of your question, what is Paydoc and what are the main ideas behind it? You know, Paydoc is a platform that solves a lot of large problems faced not just by merchants, but also by banks and large financial service providers in a market that is, you know, just boiling at the moment. Every five minutes, there's a new fintech something, which, you know, as a consequence of that, certain challenges also enter the market. Mm -hmm. And so Paydoc is a platform that solves a lot of these problems. We help merchants work better with banks and financial service providers. And we do it all through a single platform that you can load up in an afternoon. And so, you know, we're at a stage in the company where we're growing and serving some of the best, you know, and well-known not-for-profits in the world, large retailers and others, as they seek to navigate, you know, what's happening in fintech today and, you know, how to better embrace their customers and take advantage of, you know, everything we read in the, the Financial Times every five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've talked a bit about the challenges. What are the main challenges that Paydoc is solving? Yeah, so the big challenge that we solve is one where merchants have every five minutes a new payment something that they have to connect to. You know, there's there's Stripe, there's Adian, there's Checkout.com, there's Afterpay, there's Clearpay, there's Affirm, there's Klarna, there's, you know, e-wallets, there's Apple Pay, there's, there's Alipay. You know, I could go on for hours list, list, listing off names. Mm -hmm. And what we hear it from, from merchants is that they just don't know where to start. They can't tell the difference anymore. Mm -hmm. The market's moving too fast. And, and what are they going to do? And so Paydoc is kind of like an Amazon for payments. And, and this is a problem that, you know, Paydoc or someone else, you know, we're all here to solve it, mm -hmm. is how do we help merchants embrace all these payment services in a, in a way that is easy for them, easy for their tech team, doesn't cost too much. They can plug on new things, remove things, you know, without uh, a lot of cost. And so what we hear from the market is that merchants say, well, that's great. You know, Stripe was, was great for a while, but now we see that there's this cheaper vendor over here and there's this alternative payment method over here. And, and how do we take advantage of, of all this? Mm -hmm. So the problem that we solve is one where merchants are staring at this ocean of choice and they just don't know where to start. They don't know how to win. They're not payments experts. They want to stay agile. Mm -hmm. they, they honestly don't know what to do and they need a safe and independent kind of platform to help them navigate that. And so I think, you know, as consumers, we love Amazon Prime, especially during lockdown. Mm -hmm. It's the place you go to get stuff. You know, Paydoc is kind of like the place you go to get stuff if you're a merchant looking for payments inventory. Mm -hmm. and, and really, that's what, that's what Paydoc is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I will mention one other, one other problem that we solve. And I think this relates to the industry and, and thinking about, you know, our conversation. If you're, if you're a large bank or a large payment service provider and you're thinking of, of releasing a new technology to market, a new product even for consumers, you know, um, how is that going to stand out amidst the hundreds of other choices? How, and, and how is it going to provide the 10x value that's going to encourage merchants to switch from what they're currently doing to this new this new um, this new product that you've launched, and I was speaking uh, with the uh, ex CFO of one of a, a household brand. I can't say who, but the ex CFO of one of the most uh, most well known household brands. Something that you know comes to a lot of our doors. Uh, you know, related to you know things we love to eat, and and they said every time the payments problem came up, uh, they it was always deprioritized because the switching costs were too high. There was no easy way to consume the value. So they, they readily admit they left money on the table because mm -hmm. they weren't able to 
consume you know what the market had to offer easily without a transformation project so paydoc turns this sort of trans transformation project that merchants need to go through turns it into a tick and flick on our dashboards everything just works and that creates a great opportunity for banks and other financial service providers who want to introduce products to the market but need a delivery mechanism yeah. so paydoc's that delivery mechanism solving problems for both sides of the market mm -hmm. yeah it seems like there's so much, so many services, it's like really overwhelming and PayDoc really provides kind of the ease of like the decisions. Um, but are there aren't any other benefits that PayDoc specifically offers the banking and financial service industry specifically? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do actually. We've had quite a bit of success in servicing the financial services industry. Mm -hmm. If we think about, you know, what banks are great at and what the financial services industry is great at and things that maybe they're not so great at, but mm -hmm. they're great at processing payments, they're great at financial service products, they're great at a lot of things, but sometimes moving very fast and staying very close to the, their customers, the merchants, mm -hmm. there can be challenges there because... Uh, I guess the things that drive the businesses are slightly different. Merchants want to move really fast. They want to consume great products. Mm -hmm. They're not as worried about all the same things that the banks are worried about. They don't have the same regulatory and compliance overheads that they have to maintain. They don't have legacy infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love doing at Paydoc is I love working with large banks to say, look, what have you got on the shelf? What have you got under the hood? What's great? Can we help get that out to the market together? Can we drop in some paydoc technology that works alongside your technology and introduces you and connects you directly to the merchant so the merchant doesn't have to go over here and get this thing and go this long sort of route and maybe you know at the end of the day there'll be a, a current account or, or some sort of acquiring down the bottom but maybe not if paydoc can help get products payments products directly to the market cut out the middleman as it were that gives the banks a bit more speed sort of by proxy through paydoc and so we can close gaps for, you know, slower moving financial service providers by simply offering our technology as a bridge to the market for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the pandemic accelerated the digital adoption in every area. I don't think I've used cash for the last three months. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, how does this acceleration change the competitive landscape of the payment industry, in your opinion? Yeah, phenomenally. And, and I love your point about not using cash. You know, I think some of our employees and, and myself included, you know, we do well if we get out of the house and, you know, once a week. So yeah. <laughs> getting out of the house and using cash, two big challenges of, of Corona, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, how, how has that changed e-commerce? Well, there was an interesting stat, I think, by the group ACI. Um, out of April, they said there was like a 209% increase in e-commerce. And I'm, I'm not sure what the month to month increases have been mm -hmm. since then, but we've seen a pretty clear trend. I, I think overall, I think it was like 20 to 40%, somewhere in there, I read some stats somewhere saying there was a substantial boost in e-commerce. And obviously that's no surprise, you know, we're using our mobiles. I think there was one retailer reported a 55% increase in mobile phone purchases, based purchases mm -hmm. um, during Corona. So I think we're seeing a big shift and I don't think we're going to go back to the way we were. I don't think you're you're going to go back to just using cash the way you were. Mm -hmm. We've all embraced the convenience, the security, the mm -hmm. speed that comes with you know alternative payment methods or non-cash payment methods. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, I, I did. We recently had a conversation with someone who actually does accept cash at sort of like kiosks and convenience stores and things like this to help you buy Bitcoin and even make donations and a really interesting. Uh, a company who still had a cash proposition that was still kind of working in Corona days, but it was interesting. It was to help buy digital products and like, like Bitcoin that you can use in other places. So mm -hmm. that was interesting. Um, obviously, you know, they, they were looking to us to help them get to market and to manage some some areas related to anti-money laundering and know your customer and Paydot can sort of even augment value propositions related to cash. But mm -hmm. you're hundred percent right. You know, cash is, you know, on the out, digital mm -hmm. payments are on the in. And the faster that we all accept that and we get on board with that, I think, you know, the more interesting it's going to be for merchants, the more interesting it's going to be for consumers because, you know, merchants want to accept digital payments with as little cost, as little friction as possible, mm -hmm. and consumers want the convenience. And, and ideally, we'd wrap it up with some loyalty. Mm -hmm. some other things so that I knew that if I was using a particular payment method online mm -hmm. in different merchants somehow there was it was aggregating some kind of loyalty or incentives for me I would love that 
right now it's just about the speed and security of the transaction mm -hmm. but i think you know next generation is going to be more about loyalty and incentives and, and what can we do what can we do next mm -hmm. and so even while i think a lot of banks are looking at well how do we get new stuff to the market a lot of us are looking at well cool you know, let transactions taken care of. What's next? What's the next big thing in payments? Um, so, you know, what's version three? What's version four of FinTech look like? Uh, what's in store for PayDoc? What themes do you see emerging in 2021? Yeah, absolutely. Look, what's in store for PayDoc? I think as the market realizes that, whoa, there's hundreds of things out there. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Like, you know, it's like Amazon. There's so much out there. How can I how can I access them? It's just too hard. It's too confusing. I've thrown up my hands. You know, as the market begins to realize that's the status quo. As the market, by market, I mean merchants. Mm -hmm. um, I think Paydoc's in for a very exciting you know few years in helping sort of consolidate and simplify the way merchants take and manage payments. Ultimately, it's going to mean that you know consumers have more options faster. It's mm -hmm. going to mean that large financial services and banks have a way to get to the market quicker, which ultimately gets you know, through merchants to consumers. So the consumer is ultimately going to be benefiting from Paydoc's accelerated growth over the next few years. Mm -hmm. But I hope it, it's not just you know, a slightly more convenient or loyalty related experience for the consumer. I hope it's great businesses that grow up you know, benefiting from our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, banks can capitalize and, and existing FIs can capitalize on what's happening in the market without having to spin up new tech teams internally, you know, which extends roadmaps to three to five years, you know, Paddock can compress those to three months. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we hope we want to bring the future forward. We want to bring the future of fintech forward. Mm -hmm. So I think what's ahead of us is just a lot more of what we're currently doing, which is helping, you know, wire together complex and fragmented payment systems into a, a very simple outcome for both merchants and, you know, the industry. Mm -hmm. So more traction, you're going to see more of us in the news. Um, we're going to see more great fintech hitting the streets and hopefully, you know, we're going to see you know, more people busking or, or whatever it is they're doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> able to accept payments no matter where they are.